you here? Good, because I'm so excited about what we're doing today. What are we doing today? I see no critters. No critters. We are showing, demonstrating how to do a wool needle felting surface. Well, well that's interesting. No. So we don't like foam. No. And we have the Stabit Wabbit in several different sizes, which is our burlap rice filled burlap felting surface, which I've been using tried and true for years, years, eight years, six years, uh, at least six. somewhere in there. Um, but I've seen some conversations online about solid wool felting surfaces. And I thought we can make that. <laughs> well, it's really cool. It's like custom. It is. It's you want so it to look like. fun. So this is the first. Okay. Let me tell you what it is first. What I'm using. I'm using flat mat, which is a, a byproduct of another industry. So that's good. We're, we're saving it from um, the dumpster. Yes. Really, probably. Yes. And I'm using a little bit of fill, and I'll explain why in a moment, which is also a byproduct. And then I'm using two ounce bats. So you can either use a landscape bat, which is what we carry, that's, that's two ounces, or you can use two one ounce bats. Um, and that makes a pretty color on the outside. You don't even have to use the bat. If you want to go plain Jane and do just the off-white, that works too. So this is the first one I made and it's a little flat <laughs> but perfectly it's like well felted um, it works fine it's just a little on the thin side sorry Milo okay. and that was with the um, ocean landscape bat and the way the landscape bats work is they open up into a nice big flat surface so on the ocean, the dark is at one side. I just reoriented it um, to be in the middle. You, so you can pull it apart and, and make it look the way that you want to. Um, timber has a little bit of an ombre, but it's, it's a little more consistent. All the landscape bats are different and you'll see, um, you'll see pictures online. So then Talbot said it needs to be thicker and also if you put some fill in, maybe it will have um, a more of a convex shape and not get concave when it's felted. So then I made this one using uh, meadow, summer, summer sky, maybe. Oh boy, this, this beautiful landscape bat, um, which I love, and then I got Why? even, no. even puffier with sorry my love this one so this one's nice and nice and full and that is the blue moon pumpkin with a merino accent color so tons of fun there and the cool thing is flat mat makes two and it makes two this size so the ones that I was seeing online were nine by nine which for me is too small um, not not crazy about that. Then I made this one with um, with this landscape bat. Listen to me, I like this one. This one's called <laughs> something clever, of course. Forest. Um, forest, yeah. Forest. Forest. And this is the one I've been using, and uh, you can see it's pretty well used. I did something white on it, but um, and I pulled a lot of the white out. But here's here's what I like. They're very firm. They're very light. Um, light is great when you're traveling. It's nice in your lap. I think I still prefer the stab it on my surface when I'm just standing here felting because it is heavy and it doesn't get knocked around um, as I'm because I'm kind of a spaz. So it just it's all preference. Nothing that I've made so far has felted into it. Um, you just just like any other surface if you lift every so often you know make sure you're not completely just straight stabbing right into the same place so it doesn't get embedded that's going to save your um, save your felting surface the process that I've developed I don't know how anybody else does it um, 
I don't know the ones online, the brand that I looked at said that they were coming from Nepal. It said that they were entirely needle felted, which I found really That's hard to believe unless it's a machine. So okay. I don't know, but is it's a combination, a little bit of needle felting, um, but mostly a little bit of wet felting, and then your washer and dryer does all the work. Ooh. Yeah, so um, real satisfying, fast, and I've been using this one for about a month, um, and so far, so good. So, I think I'm ready to show you what's involved. Oh, okay. Okay. We're rolling. So we need three things in addition to a few tools. Fill. I'd say fill's optional if you want a flatter felting surface. Flat mat, which just works great. And two ounce bat. This is the desert landscape bat, which, so this is like kind of on the lighter side. Flat mat makes two, which is cool because you can, um, you can have a light one and a dark one for different felting that you're doing. Oh, this side's pretty with the purple in there. So that's the side that I'll put on the outside. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. Set fill aside. Oh, I have my a felting surface and a needle. I'm gonna use the pen tool. I might use the um, punch tool a little bit because we've gotta get, we've gotta get um, the structure that we make um, a little bit felted before we wet felt it or throw it in the washer and dryer. So flat mat um, comes like this. This is double here. So I'm gonna cut this in half. Um, in my notes, I wrote short ways. <laughs> because if I took it this way and folded it the other way, no, I'm off screen. It would be like real long and that skinny. That is like a hot dog. The other one is like a hamburger. Yes, we want the fatter, not the long and skinny. We want this this shape. It's really I hard. would watch the tutorial. <laughs> watch the tutorial and then do after you've watched it through because you're going to understand where you're heading. So I've got some fabric scissors and I'm going to cut this in half. Hamburger would be round. Well, it's a good, pretty good analogy. I can think of a few more, but we'll stick with the food. Okay. <laughs> um, now, I think, like I said, this is two, so I'm just going to get rid of one. This is about the size you're going to make, like that. I think it's worth the time to fluff this up a little bit. You could use a dog brush. You could use your fingers. It's going to um, allow the fibers in the felting process to just come together a little easier if they're a little fuzzy. Plus, fuzz out your edges a little bit because that way, when you fold it up, you don't have such a chunk. You have a little bit more of a... Um, a blending, a blending type edge. If you don't have a dog brush, you can just take your fingers and pull. Kind of tease it out. So I'm going to spend a minute doing both sides and all the edges. Oh, okay, I have flat mat, all fuzzy, fuzzy edges. Fill comes in a bag. With Phil, a face. With a face. Hopefully you get a friendly face. I pulled one out. The first one I pulled out was a little angry. Oh, I was like, oh, I don't no. want an angry fill. Angry fill to people. <laughs> You're gonna have like more fill than you need. Um, for this project. Phil comes in kind of pieces. He's not always one whole piece, but um, he's a little fuzzier, a little fluffier, and that's what that looks like. 
So this is perfect, actually, this little piece that just came off. I'm going for, um, this ends up about nine by, well, it ends up, starts out bigger, but nine by 12. And then once it's felted, it gets a little thinner. So the piece of fill you want is? So fill you want in the center, and it's gonna be a third this way and a third okay. this way. So let me grab a ruler and see what we've got here. I, you know me, I eyeball everything, and then people are like, what am I doing here? Let's see, good. Okay, so I've got him at eight, which is fine because I want him to be in the middle. Um, and this is 12. So each of these edges now to the edge is more like nine inches, which is perfect. And then this should be at least 12. Yes, 12 and 12, perfect. Now I'm gonna take, do thirds here. Like so. Now I think I'm gonna put a little more fill here so that it's encapsulated by this and then these come over. So I'm gonna put a similar size of fill and you just have to rip it, just have to rip it off of your chunk that came in your bag. So they'll have fill for two of these. Oh, they'll have plenty of fill for two of these. And several pumpkins. Yes, oh, great for or pumpkins. Or something some other large project. Like I said, you want it kind of oriented towards the center because when you do all this folding, that really bulks up, bulks up the edges. So you're doing some tucking. Mm-hmm. Semi-firm tucking. No yep, Just loose, to make loose. sure everything's neatly folded. I wonder, let me back up a second. I feel like maybe. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go the, the long side in first or the short sides in first. but that's what you're after. This pillow. That's the other thing. When you're traveling, yes. it's light, yes. and it's your lumbar pillow, yes. or your I wanna sleep on the plane pillow. And it's cool looking. <laughs> and it's cool looking. So here's our beautiful landscape bat. And you will see, it takes a little bit of orienting, like I have a little bit of a thin spot here, so I'm just gonna shuffle things into place a little bit. And it just comes over the edges. Um, it just comes over the edges of your pillow. And then on this side, I want to get this a little bit tight. A little bit tight, so it's kind of tucking everything in. And I've ha made a couple where I had to kind of stretch the bat out a little bit just to get everything to, to line up nicely. Okay, so once I have it like this, I stab. You want to stab a little while. The, um, I'm going to grab the punch tool because that really just pushes it along a little bit better. Or my helper is going to grab the punch tool. You're gonna be here for, I don't know, like probably 10 minutes or so. I'm not gonna film all of it. On this side, I want everything to blend. 
Let me show, while we're here, let me do another one real quick and okay. show another option. And then, and then I'm gonna show how to um, fold the edges in. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to show another layout option. We picked out um, two ounces of Peacock and one of the um, candy silk mixes. In all the ones I've made so far, I have not put silk. So this will be a good experiment to see how the silk works. I'm gonna set these aside and get my fill. We have new house carded bats, like, you know, kind of in the works. We've got some beautiful silk blend um, floral colors that we wanna do. So if you're, depending on when you're seeing this video, um, I would just take a look in the house carded section and see what the options are. Just remember that you need um, you need two ounces. I'll do this one this way because I think I did the other one the other way. Oh, I was going to put more fill in there. Get a little bit off this edge. make your own felting surface humor. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to try something a little bit different with this one. I'm sorry I'm experimenting on the fly here, but I'm just looking at my bumpy edges and thinking I don't want so many folds. I want it as smooth as possible. So I'm cutting a third off. So I've got the same thing, the two layers of fill. Still folding this in. And then I'm going to take this one and go stretch it out a little and go around this way. Let's see if I can make it a little smoother. So, like I said, watch the tutorial. <laughs> if you didn't listen the first time before you get out your scissors and cut, maybe perhaps watch this to its completion. <laughs> watch the tutorial and then do it. I made these a month or two ago and I made so many and I was like, oh, I've got it. And now I'm like, getting into it again, questioning my, my methods. What I, what I wanted to avoid was like a lot of, a lot of folds in one place. So this will also allow me to pull, pull this kind of tightly, get it all tucked in. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I can even stab this a little before I make it easier to wrap. Yeah, like with a nice strong three needles, just get it all kind of stuck together. I think, feel like I have sort of a wimpy two needles right here, but they're all gonna have two. Oh. <laughs> I know, I prefer two needles when I sculpt, so they're probably all gonna have two. Okay. So we have two bats. So funny. We were telling everybody else that's here today. Oh, this will only take 20 minutes. <laughs> Not when Sarah re like reinvents the wheel. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I just love this color so much. So what's happening is your bat is coming off the carter like this. Actually, in our case here, it's coming off the carter um, as two ounces and then we split them in half. So if you're careful with it, you will see how, how it unfolds. So I'm just gonna bring these together. Well, I could go a little off center so I could bring these all the way together, let them overlap nicely, and then put my stripe, I like it a little off-center. Yeah. 
I see a tiny bald spot on my that's one. That's where things. I'm going to put the. That's where I'm going to put the stripe. Nice. Probably not quite the full width of this. Maybe half. Use the fat half. Ooh. Yeah, so we'll see. This has silk, so we'll see how the silk behaves. Um, all right, so like the first one, we're going to start stabbing. This amount of stabbing, and I'll, sh I'll show you, is to get it smooth and attached. I'm not trying to actually felt, um, you know, get all the felting done. Because as you'll see when you, when you watch the video all the way through, <laughs> we're going to um, just wet felt the surface a little bit. We're gonna wrap it in wall and wet felt it, and then we're gonna put it in the washer and dryer, and that really does all the work. And I have a, a front load. Like, I don't even have the kind that agitates, and it, and it did really well, so. I'm gonna get this as tight as possible. that people can essentially customize. Oh my gosh. You know, maybe yes. you're not a blue person and you're totally a pink person, yes. so. Oh my gosh, so much fun. And I wanna have one in like every room. Like, oh, I'm gonna felt in here now. They, they could match your decor <laughs> if you really wanted to be intense about it. So here, I want to kind of lift this up, get my my base layer going here. It's nice, the bats are nice versus like trying to pull all roving into place because it's already in this nice wide sheet, you know, that you can actually use to your advantage to smooth everything out. You're not <laughs> like laying strip wisps of strip. fiber on here, yeah. Oh, it's a good thickness. It's a good really thickness, cover. it covers. I didn't have any um, bald spots on any of the ones that I made. A little bit of fill felt up through, so it, it which is what you want, but it does pollute the, um, the deeper, brighter colors a little bit, you know, because it's white. But it's just a felting surface, so. I have a little bald spot here, so I'm just gonna bring more of the wool into that spot. And it doesn't take too much stabbing, as you can see, to get things um, secured. I mean, this is real time so far. And like I said, if we had a, um, if I had prepared better and put three 36 gauge needles in my pen tool, I would really be moving along here. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the ends. It's just like a Christmas present. Um, it's a little hard for me, sorry, you're probably gonna see my head. You have a pretty side and a not pretty side, like just like your Christmas, Christmas wrapping. So this is my pretty side. This is where the, the center you know, of the bats were. And so everything that I fold, I'm gonna to fold towards the not as, not as pretty side. But the cool thing too, is that you can use both sides, of, both sides of these felting surfaces, so they last even longer. Got a little bit of bald spots here, I'm just gonna tuck that in. I mean, this is so, so oh, firm, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I just wanna, you wanna avoid any like great big um, bulk, you know, bulges of wool. So I've got some loose um, fill, uh, flat mat ends here. So I'm gonna stab those on first so that I have a nice, nice rounded edge here. Sorry, not sure how well you can see that. See all these 
I'm just kind of teasing them out, tucking them around, stabbing them on. Then I'm going to stab my, my, this is my not as pretty side, I'm going to stab that down first. You want to lift it and look because I see a bald spot that she doesn't see okay. on this side a little bit. If you roll it upward. Yeah, right here. Yep. Yep. So, so just kind of roll it, roll it around and check all. Yep. I might even be able to take a little bit of this because I just don't need quite that much. And then cover. Mm-hmm. And then, yep, right here I've got a little, little thin spot. So I'll just spread that out. Tack that on. So I've got my not as nice side up now. So I'm just going to tuck all these down in. And then as smooth as I can pull this edge around. And I will check again for bald spots. You want to avoid like big, like creasy folds. Like I've got a little bit of a oh yeah crease here, so I either want to like kind of tease it out or put a little bit of fiber over it, or both. It's easier to work with than wrapping paper. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I, well, okay. For starters, you're making it look pretty easy. <laughs> Good. And once you fold the paper, you're kind of hosed. Uh, no. I'm glad it's looking easy. It's not. It's fun. It's not. You know. It's not rocket science. It's just a little, a little time and effort. When I get this secure, I'm gonna go at it with the, um, with the punch tool a bald spot here but I'm not sure it might not need more fiber it might just need me to move things around a little All right, let's do this side this side feels a little more solid I think my um my flat mat was full like folded yeah. solid this was the kind of end with the with the open ends Yeah, the cool thing about wool on like paper is that you can tease it apart and yep. make it do what you want it to do. The old desert desert one over here is feeling neglected. I know. I need to get back to that one. All right. So that one's come together. Like I said, I'm gonna stab it, um, stab it some more, and we will. And I'm gonna fold the edges of the. Should I do the desert one on camera? The edges. Um. I mean, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see it. Yeah, it's just more of the same. Just tucking this down and then this around. It might even. It might show up a little better. With the different colors. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like it just looks a little more clear. So the challenge here is making the colors blend without looking too wrapped over. Mm -hmm. I, I can, mm -hmm. I'm not forming very good sentences today. <laughs> it's been a challenging morning. We had a snow squall here that had our kids like out on the wow. roads in the middle of waiting for the bus for half an hour in the snow. It's fun for the first five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so this one's going to show kind of the, the folds a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is take a little off the edge so that I have it to touch things up. 
and then just so you don't want to fold, fold too little. much of that brown into over the purple or right I'm trying to preserve the the fun of the of the bat here but also not have bold spots yeah I want to check it from this side because I feel like my purple's coming around the edge a little bit so here's a pretty big bald spot right here Your bat, when you open it up, um, you can spend a little bit of time getting it more evenly. Um, just how you want it. Yeah, just how you want it. I kind of just jumped right in, but it might need a little, um, little love to even it out, the thickness from one side to the other. These bats have um, pretty much these are all top coats, so a lot of merino, um, a little bit of the New Zealand top coat. Jennifer developed a lot of them, yes? Mm -hmm. Yep, Jennifer made the um, landscape bats. Okay, I'll show you these once I have them stabbed up a little bit more. So with a little help from my friends, we got these. So fancy. All. That was nice and big. It away. It's, <laughs> it's huge. I'm like looking at, I'm like, were the other ones this big? So I have a piece of wall here. And the idea is to get this as tight as I can get it. It's like a little, you want it to be encased in a little sock. You know, when I've done other wet felting, you can put it in like a pantyhose or, oh, I feel so old fashioned saying that. Nylons. A pantyhose. A pantyhose. You need um, a pretty big pantyhose for this. <laughs> but, right, so there's nothing that I could think of that was the right shape. So we're making our own little container here. And I just want to get through both layers with a couple of safety pins. Semi-tight. Yeah, it's tight. It's snug. Yeah. As tight as you can. What happens is once it's wet and you're wet felting it a little bit, um, it loosens up again. Okay. So kind of like a gift again, I just kind of fold this in so that I can give it a good tug. And then I just do two more. I guess you could um, you could tack each of these down separately, but I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't think you're lazy. I think you're well, efficient. I, <laughs> I'm not as careful always as I should be sometimes. So that side's together, but not. Oh, whoops, I see. Okay. These are not great safety pins. These are like came in my little cheap sewing kit safety pins. So I'll probably put a couple extra. Oh, it's in. It's good. What do you mean? Does it need to be in the the other one? Other layer. I don't one? think so. Okay, just to itself. I'll put one more just to make sure. Yeah, that's just to itself. Okay, so I'm going to move this to the sink and totally wet it down and just with my hands and a lot of soap start getting start getting it going. Okay. Okay, and then um, it's I'm not going to open it up. You're not going to be able to see much. And then off camera because we, I'm not taking the, we camera, cannot put the camera home with the, me. On the washing machine. That would be boring anyway. <laughs> I'm going, so if I were home, for example, I would put this in my kitchen sink, which I first would have to clean. <laughs> <laughs> and I would get some Dawn or my olive oil soap and just first start gently. And you're going to feel it's all going to kind of flatten and tighten down. And I'll show it in our sink here. 
but it's just gonna keep rubbing and rubbing, rubbing, then rinse it, squeeze it, like rinse it, squeeze it, because you don't want to put this in the washing machine with a lot of soap. Um, when they did the other ones, I put them in with clothes. Oh. With other clothes. Okay. Um, I guess I thought that that might just kind of help the evenness of the okay. bouncing around in there. Um, so I have not done them with by themselves. Okay. Just so everybody knows, like, what I've experimented with so far. Well, if you're going to run the washing machine, you may as well <laughs> exactly. put some clothes in. And so after you've done this wet felting with your hands, and before you put it in the washer and dryer, you might have to undo these and retighten it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's... Um, Milo's going to just hold the hold the camera over the sink and just show this wet felting. I got both of them in here. Uh-oh. Oh, I just didn't have... <laughs> Sometimes we don't have a lot of water for her. I'll just concentrate on one so we don't have to... Oh. Wear the right clothes. Dawn on my hands, and I'm just gently squeezing. I try to get the little ends because I feel like they're the most um, kind of precarious part of the whole thing. Get a little more soap on this side. You could use your um, your olive oil soap as well. I guess one benefit to not sticking it all together is that you can kind of get underneath here and... Oh, yeah. But you'll feel like it was like this big poof, and now it's like this kind of hard... Already that's not even yeah. that much... Can you see? Like, can you see the how much it's flattened yeah. out? So I think how much you do this is not super going to affect the outcome. And, you know, I didn't try every single scenario. I did try, I did try setting up my wet felting kit and wet felting each layer as I folded okay. it. And I, it, it really didn't, it was too much wool. No one wants to do all that. Like, and it didn't really it make didn't, a difference. it didn't make a difference. And so... Why do all that? Why do all that? Um, so all I'm saying is I did not exhaust like every single possible way to do this, but why should I when I'm happy with, with where I did get to? So you see how this is getting kind of loose yeah. um, and this. So um, after I rinse this, I will undo this and refold it tighter before I put it in the washer and dryer. And do you do a hot cold See, like shock all, thing or just all, no, warm? No, I think just rinse, yeah, just rinse it out. It's not felted, so it's no reason to really hot cold it. So I'm just going to get some warm water here. And I think that's um, a pretty decent amount of time. I can just feel that it has firmed up underneath my hands a little. And I keep kind of like squeezing it in on itself so it doesn't just totally flatten into a pancake. I have to do this other one when I'm done. Oh my god. You can't see now my shark. 
No, but for the viewing audience, <laughs> where I, I mean, I could make that happen. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. So yeah, I will take this, undo it, and pull everything in tight, and re, um, re-wrap, re, uh, pin it. We're back. Yeah. Next day, I took my soaking wet, slightly felted, wool felting surfaces, be the name, <laughs> home, and um, I put them in the washer and then the dryer. Like I said, I have the, the sort of front load style. That's what I'm using. And they came out great. This one has a few couple of more like wrinkles, um, but I found that if you use it as a cushion, and sit on it for a while and stuff, it'll flatten out. You can even iron it. This one, I feel, is a little tighter and more uniform. And this is the one that I cut that third of flat mat and wrapped it around nice and tight. Um, it's so. really the, the girdle concept. The again. girdle, yes. And it, this one came out actually exactly um, nine by 12. And so, impressive. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying exactly. It's 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 not a, a rectangle, so it's not exact. But right in there, this one came out a little bit longer. So I'm happy with the results, and I hope that you guys do this too. And I've just, like I said, I've been using mine, and I really like it. Um, and we could show. Well, they'll figure it out. I was gonna say we could show felting on it, but um, it, it works just like just like the surfaces you're used to. Each one has its own little you know little quirks and tendencies, but it, it seems somewhat indestructible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I wonder if the pets out there are gonna like them. Pets might like them. Your tush is gonna like it if you have to go watch games and sit on cold bleachers. Oh, nice. Like I said, it's a great lumbar pillow. Yeah. <laughs> So have fun with it, and you can um, find us at SarafinaFiberArt.com if you have any questions. And on Facebook, we have a group um, called Serafina Felting Fanfare, which is full of support and a great place to share your projects and also ask questions. So thanks so much. See you soon. Bye.